Hi everyone. So today we're going on an exciting journey. This is something that I have wanted to experience for many, many, many years. And for various reasons, it kept sliding off my radar. Today we are about to experience the tune of King Luna. This is one of the most world-renowned tunes. This is one of the biggest discoveries in the history of archaeology. And we are going into the tomb. We're going to see the crown. We're going to see the jewels. We're going to see the way that the Egyptians bury their kings. And we're going to see all the things that uh, King Tut meant to that dynasty. And we're going to get a real glimpse. This, these are the, we'll see the hieroglyphics on the walls. We'll walk through the actual uh, tomb, which you'll see. It's like walking through a tunnel. So join me today. And um, this will be an experience. And join me. And I'm going to capture as much as I can possibly capture. And I'm going to provide as much historical evidence as I can possibly um, provide for everyone to really get the feeling. Uh, I'm here on the floor of where the exhibit is. It's taking up the entire floor and you can see everything around us. You can see the statues. You can see We will now soon enter the Valley of the Kings. This is the exhibition. This is where history and mystery will intertwine to tell the tale of, as I stated earlier, this is one of the most famous archeology span discoveries of all time. It's, it happened in 1922, uh, November 4th, 1922 in a place in Cairo called the Valley of the Kings, which was where all of the different pharaohs were buried. And that's where this British archeologist named Howard Carter made this famous discovery that would end up captivating the world for generations to come. And after years of searching, he had been searching forever, he finally found the pharaoh of uh, King Tut's tomb, almost intact, as you will see. Much of it, much of it was still the same. Uh, he says that there's a famous quote where he says he had been digging for so long and it's as if he, his eyes caught a glimmer and it was a glimmer of, of light, but it was really a glimmer of gold from all the things that he saw. Uh, what you're seeing now on the screen is we're inside the tomb now and <clears throat> excuse me we're in the tomb and you can you'll begin to see all of the different artifacts this is a, actually a picture of Howard Carter this is um, all the artifacts that were found inside of the tomb there were so many treasures treasures beyond imagination this is showing how it's a it's a movie that they show that tells you when this was unearthed this exhaustive search how the media all over the world were just in a frenzy no one could believe this because we hear these stories about kings and pharaohs of egypt and we hear these legends and we don't really know if it's true or if it's not true. But once this was on earth and all these treasures were found, that put an end to any speculation around the true, true stories around the pharaohs and the kings of Egypt. This picture here is showing all of the things that was inside of his tomb. And if you, you when you say tomb, we got to think about it's like a huge, you're going off into a cave and it's like, uh, uh, it's almost like an underground bunker or an underground basement with all these little rooms and chambers in it. And inside of these rooms and chambers, these are all the things that they would put in there with the king once he died because they, the Egyptians believed in the afterlife. So they believe that when that person goes to the other side, they're going to come back and they 
have all of their uh, belongings with them when they come back. So this is why and this is how uh, they were buried. Um, this kind of shows the timeline of when this happened. This happened in 1922, which is so fascinating if you think about the period of the early dynasty of Egyptians. We're talking two, three thousand years prior to that. Two, three thousand years prior to that, and here it is now. They discover this royal DNA, this royal lineage. Uh, it is said that King Tut was only 19 years old when he actually died and that he was like our politicians today he, he was a he was the king he was a young boy and you can hear in this story that's being told here but really they're saying he was kind of like a figurehead it was really other people in power that were running the show but you can hear here in this uh, story. At only nine years old, the boy ascended the throne, changing many of his father's decrees. The worship of the traditional gods was revived, and the young king changed his name to Tutankhamun, honoring Amon, the traditional king of the gods. His nine-year reign saw the... So he went on to reign as king for another nine years. And it's still a mystery as to how he actually died. Uh, legend has it, has it that maybe it was malaria or maybe it was uh, not recovering from an accident. It's just a mystery. Uh, these are further treasures that are in the tomb. This is a statue of his uh, alma bearer. These are beds, these are chairs, these are artifacts, chests, uh, paintings on the wall. Uh, these are everything from plates and um, vessels that you would drink from. And I think one of the things that is so fascinating, if you can just kind of get a good look, it was dark inside and I couldn't really use a flash, but if you could look at, this is a, a huge bed. The way that these items are sculptured and the way that they're built and the the furnishing, look at this. This is a furn this is a like a, a zebra or some type of animal. It is just so beautiful. It's like furniture that you would go into the store and buy now. So it is not a legend that the Egyptians and the people of that time were very, very intelligent. And they seem to have access to some knowledge, some information on how to build things, uh, how they did it. We don't know, just like we don't know how they even built the pyramids, for example. Look at that chair. And this is a chair for a kid. This is a child's chair with a footrest. And it is beautifully painted and so meticulous. I mean, it was just amazing. I think that was one of the most amazing things for me is to see all of the things that were in the tomb. And mind you, everything, and look, that's a, uh, a statue with an onk on it. It's just like, they took everything that was in his house and that he owned. So that's his chariot. He was buried with three chariots inside of the tomb. So that means, and they, they deconstructed the chariot and so that, you know, for them, when you come to life in the afterlife, you're going to have access to those things. So we're about to go into the most amazing part, and that is the burial process and the number of for a for a king the number of different that's another chamber by the way that's another chamber that has even more treasures in it that he that was buried with him all of these artifacts were buried with him so you have to think when you it's not like we say buried now it's like in a in a coffin and in the ground this is a huge huge underground 2,000 square feet <laughs> think about it like that place so now look so that's another chamber with some more artifacts in it. Uh, we're about to look at the different layers of the burial again and how that whole process works. Uh, if you were a king or a pharaoh, it is several different layers or several different uh, coffins that you would be buried in. 
So we're going to experience what that looks like. If you can see here, uh, we're going down this little corridor, but you can begin to see here, there are one, two, three different coffin uh, tops. And this is like, say the lid of the coffin and the body goes inside of the coffin, but the face of the coffin is designed and the head is designed like that person who is uh, the king, so to speak. So you'll see what that looks like shortly but it's just amazing how they would uh, do things to preserve as you can see here because the mummification process was so meticulous then there's this extra extra it covering and insertion of the body to protect it and look at the body here and it has all the gold that's how the body was actually unearthed These are toe coverings and finger coverings that was gold. So let's say his body is in that coffin and then that coffin sits in that coffin and then that coffin sits in that coffin. That was pretty amazing. Another thing that was found in the tomb that I find fascinating, especially for people who are into stones and into gems and rocks, he was also buried with a lot of different stones and there were huge pieces of stone it was granite and it was turquoise and amethyst and that was a part of his treasures and of course gold but a part of his treasures i thought was interesting was a lot of stones and that tells me that the egyptians really really believed in the power of uh, stones and the power of crystals and just things in the earth in general. Otherwise, they would not have buried him uh, with those things. And this, again, is his chariots. This is three chariots, and they pretty much deconstructed them. So they took the wheels off, and they, they uh, and all of this stuff was still intact. This was so amazing. All of this stuff was still in, in, intact when it was discovered in the 1920s and just their belief system in the afterlife and how they upheld that belief system that that person especially that king or in this case that pharaoh these are pictures of all the little golden boxes and all the little uh, statues that actually were buried with them but again it shows you how they strongly believed in in the practice of what it is that they uh, what it is that they were doing and look at that this is a chamber this is another little chamber that has vessels you can see water vessels and look at that picture that picture is just so amazing because I've seen pictures like this in the department store in this day and time and just think this was over 3,000 4,000 years ago so the technology and the artistry that they had, it just surpasses our understanding, totally surpasses our understanding. So this pretty much sums up, I mean, it's just so much here, it's just hard to articulate everything, but if you just look at the video and go back and look at it again twice in slower motion, so that you can actually look at all of the different artifacts and then do your own research is absolutely fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, look at this chair. This is a chair. I mean, look at that. And then we're talking 4,000 years ago. And you can't really see it up close because it was kind of dark. They're painted and the painting is so meticulous and beautiful beautiful colors and you know statues of different animals and uh it's just not even explainable it's not explainable oh you think i can see yeah oh okay well you can't see that oh there we go ah uh, okay and look at those
Look at this here. Look at this swan. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, isn't that beautiful? I mean, I've had a piece of uh, sculpture like that before. That concludes the tour with King Tut. Uh, if you can find it in your area, you should definitely try to see it. And of course, Cairo would be even better. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel so that I can bring you more travel and more adventures. See you soon.